What's up, everybody? Um, so this is the second video in my uh, life story uh, vlog series, whatever. Um, yeah, I said I was going to do this like every like 10 videos towards my 500th, meaning this should be video number 470, but I really don't care. It, yeah, it's really kind of uh, whatever, but... Okay, I'm hearing neighbors. <laughs> yeah, uh, alright, so... I do want to set a few things straight. Um, I used to do videos like these. I did something about a year ago. Uh, like, like almost like a, almost like a tutorial thing about how to, like, about how to, about how to talk to people and whatever, about how to talk to women. Uh, cause, I guess, I don't know, I was just, I, I was bored, to be quite honest. I was bored and I wanted to try something different. I wanted to, uh, what I did was, like, I combined, like, I combined one of, uh, Armake 21's videos. I don't know if any of you remember him, but he was, like, one of those, uh, like, one of those, like, really pissed off reviewers back when that was really popular. And he did a video where he was, like, bitching at, like, uh, at, at like, uh, the Game FAQ's message board. And I was doing the same thing with, like, this, uh, with this, um, with this attraction board. Uh, so, yeah. And I thought it was really dumb, so I got rid of it. And then, and then I did a thing where, like, where, where I, I, like, copied, uh, a guy who was doing, like, punch-out, um, walkthroughs, and that sounded really dumb, too, so I'm like, okay, let me get rid of those, uh, and then I tried it again in the summer, and I just said to myself, okay, I sound like a friggin' tool, so, no, <laughs> and I never explained the motivation for making that kind of stuff, um, and I'm gonna be, uh, I'm going to be dropping some background info about me here, so if any of you who are watching this like know me personally, uh, please be mature about it uh, when you see me in person. Um, don't be all, don't try, don't make fun of me or whatever, like really like try to be a, try to be an adult about it, because um, that's one of my, that was one of my fears too, after making those videos, I was, I was going to be like, I was gonna say like, oh god, you know, what if someone I know sees this and then all of a sudden, holy crap, you know, whatever. Uh, so I'm just getting that out there. Um, you know, be mature if you know me and you see this, and you happen to see me at my job or at bowling league or at, in class or something. Like, just, you know, be an adult, please. That, that, those are the kind of people that I like to know, and that's why I don't have many friends because I, I really do believe that a lot of I do believe that a lot of people nowadays are just, I don't know, they're just, uh, boys trying to be men, and they're, or, or they're, they're just, uh, boys disguised as men, and they're girls disguised as women, you know what I mean? I don't know. If it's just me, I don't, whatever. So my motivation for making those videos back in the day was, uh, because I used to have, I don't want to say crippling social anxiety. Um, certainly not social phobia, but I did have something very similar. Um, I'll take it back to when I was in high school. Uh, I really wanted to meet girls back when I was in high school. They were like the only thing on my mind, especially the popular ones. I don't know, I was one of those guys who like, I wanted to pull like the cheerleader of the captain, cheer the cheerleading captain, and you know, I wanted to like, show her off and prove and prove all the jocks wrong and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't really know how to talk to people unless it was unless it was obligatory or unless I actually like summoned up the stones to do it, which was very rare um, until I really started taking taking steps to uh, to solve that issue. I would talk to maybe like five, ten girls a year. You know what I mean? I'm speaking from a heterosexual male's point of view too, so just to clear that up, yeah. So yeah, and 
it was even worse when I was in high school because I would do some pretty attention seeking things to uh to start conversations um and when I first started doing that, I was just you know I did what they call peacocking, which is to pretty much look different than everyone else in your own creative way um you know my high school's just like anyone else, like all the others, you know, you had your jocks, you had your goths, you had your goth guys, you had your skater kids, you had, uh, you had the greasers, you had, um, you know, you had the, uh, you had the hip-hop guys, uh, you had the nerds, you had the geeks, you had all those kind of, uh, groups, and I didn't fit into any of them at all. I was a comp I literally felt like uh, like, no one, I couldn't relate to anybody, um, and to make myself kind of feel better about myself, I, I did stuff that was pretty edgy, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, I don't want to say edgy, because edgy is kind of a, like a buzzword, um, and I don't really like, I don't really care for using buzzwords, but I did stuff that was really like, that pushed the envelope. Uh, one of the things that I, used, that I did quite a bit was I would wear blood-stained white t-shirts to, to school. And... Because cause that was when I first started shaving, and I made a lot of mistakes when I shaved. I did that on purpose, almost. I would make sure that I, I would make sure that I would cut myself. I was very masochistic. So I would cut myself, I would see blood trickling down, and I would kind of... And I would take, like this part of my shirt right here and I would just and get blood on it and I would wear that to school I would like wear like a I would wear like a shirt over it like one of those like button down like whatever or like one of those button down like checker shirts you know what I'm talking about I don't know like a, yeah I would like, I would like a, wear like a button down polo whatever and I would put it over my shirt while my dad was taking me to school and then it would take it off right afterwards and it would reveal it would have like all this blood here as if I like as if I got off on like cutting myself it was ridiculous and that was my answer too that was my answer it was really horrible like like people would walk up to me yo why do you have blood stains on your t-shirt and I'm like oh you know I, just, I cut myself you know what I mean like but it didn't you know what I mean <laughs> but it was Attention seeking was the only way I could get attention. I remember also, like, another attention seeking thing I did was, like, uh, before, like, class elections, like, we had, like, you know, we had, like, class leaders, like, class president, whatever. And I remember I really wanted to hook up with the class president, who was also captain of the cheerleading squad. Uh, so I made up my own little. Um, me and my, me and a buddy of mine, we used to we we made up our own little campaign thing, uh, but I never had the balls to actually you know run. Uh, I called myself. Uh, we 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 did it like a thing like we we drew like this like black figure with 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 a giant question mark on his chest, and we called him No One, and we had like these giant posters of. And I would put them up next to the posters of. Uh, Of all the, of all the other people that um, that they want that want to get voted in, and 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 come election time, these would be like strewn all over the school, and I would put my no one poster right next to a whole bunch of them as it at you know to try and get attention, and it would never work because they would just get taken down. And that's how I tried to start conversations in high school. Let me check on my time real quick. Nine minutes? Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a long video, just to let you know. A lot of these are going to be very, very long. Um, yeah, so I got about ten minutes. So I get done with high school, and I start trying to do the same thing in college. Now, college is much different. Uh, I started in junior college. Uh, which is like similar to high school, but not really. Um, it's almost like a it's almost like a hybrid. It's like it's about as small as a high school, 
but you know it's not it doesn't have that high school atmosphere you know we don't have posters all over the place during the there's no there's no there's no you know there's no elections there's no class elections whatever uh so i had to do different things in order to get attention and one of these things would be to complain it's actually something that's still i don't do it now and i'll talk about that later in a future video cuz i am going to i am going to try and do like a tutorial thing about how to approach people because I want people with social anxiety and perhaps even social phobia to learn what I learned because that's important okay I'm not one of these like you know I'm not one of these like pickup guys or whatever I'm not one of these guys who has like 8,000 girlfriends and who's gotten and who's gotten laid like 7 million times you know I don't know I'm just exaggerating but you know but I can still talk to people and have it not, and, and I could still do it and not feel obligated to do it, you know what I mean? So that's what, I mean, that's going to be in the future. And I remember it was my second semester, and there was this girl who I really wanted to talk to. She was, like, she was, like, really beautiful, like, prettiest girl I've ever seen, and... I really wanted to talk to her. I saw her sitting at like a picnic, at like a picnic bench, like outside of some of the classrooms, and I'm like, I started thinking to myself, okay, I'm like, yo, all right, she's alone. She's just sitting, like, doing some homework. I need to go up and talk to this girl. So I stat, I, I, I stared at her for like, it must have been the better part of like five minutes, which is a real no-no, by the way. And then I'm like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Because I was in between classes, but my next class was in like an hour. So, like, the script that I wrote myself was like, okay, I'm going to tell this girl that I really don't like waiting an hour for the next class, and I'll ask if she agrees. It's something I still kind of do to this day, only it's a lot different. I structure it a lot differently. So I walked up to her. I kind of tossed my book bag on top of the picnic table and I said to her, you know what I really dislike? I really, I really dislike having to wait an hour for my next class. Don't you agree? And she's like, yeah, I could see how you're frustrated. And then all of a sudden we go into this big conversation and that was maybe the, that was maybe one of maybe like four girls. I had approached voluntarily um, in that entire school year and I'm asking her to watch this video so she can probably co-sign like in a co in a comment saying oh yeah that's true he really did that you know what I mean I don't know but whatever I'm gonna call her tomorrow and tell her about this video uh, so yeah um I still had a job I was a I was working just as a cashier I was just working retail so I was able to talk to people by virtue of obligation, but I was not able to talk to people voluntarily. Or not that I wasn't able to, just it took a lot of effort. Uh, and fast forward a few years later, about five years later, or four or so years later, um, that's when I, that's when I, uh, was dealing with my dad having cancer and I knew he was gonna pass away, I knew he was gonna die and I I'd never had a girlfriend, you know, I, was, I, was, I still never had sex yet you know, I really felt like pathetic and I wanted to tell him this but I didn't have the, I didn't have the balls because I didn't want to tell a dying man how pathetic I was so I started reading stuff um, there's a book out there called The Game uh, a guy named Neil Strauss wrote it. Um, Neil Strauss is a very accomplished writer. He has a whole, he has a good, he has like maybe like four, five, six books out, including the game. He's an excellent writer. You should get it. I would show you my copy, but I don't have it because a buddy of mine is borrowing it, and I haven't, and he hasn't given it back. And well, I mean, I haven't asked it back for like two months. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so whatever. 
Um, but if, if you know what I'm talking about, then get that book. Um, because it will open your eyes a lot. And so, I really wanted to meet women. So I said to myself, okay, look. I'm taking time off school. I need to learn how to talk to people, especially women, on my own, voluntarily, without without an obligation. So I picked up this book and I read it and I discovered two things in that book. First thing is called the three second rule, okay? Which is kind of like, it's not really a rule, it's set in stone, but it's more of a thing where like, if you see a girl that you're like checking out and you really want to talk to her, you have like, a very short amount of time, usually three seconds, to walk up and talk to her. So I tried to follow that the best I could. What I used to do is I used to just check out. A, I used to check out a girl, and I would be like, I'd be like, man, okay, what can I compliment her on? She has a skirt, but I'm pretty sure people have already talked about her skirt. Her hair, no. Uh, what kind of jewelry does she? And I would like study these girls before talking to them, which is really creepy. <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, oh my god, how come I didn't have a fucking, how come I didn't have a fucking restraining order, because holy shit. <laughs> and I used to do that kind of stuff. And that psychs you out. Um, so yeah, I started doing that. I also read about a thing called the newbie mission, which is pretty much what they tell you to do is they tell you to just go to some public place, mall, college campus, uh, let's see, bookstore, um, library, anything where people are, like, present, and just walk up to 10 to 20 people and just ask for the time, uh, tell them how nice they look, uh, something really dumb. And so, I did that. I, I tried to do variations of that, and I couldn't quite do it. I would, I would go to a mall or something, and I would approach, like, like three, I'd approach like three women, three girls, and I'd be like, and my heart would be like, boom, 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 boom. It'd be like, I'd like, I would like literally be like breathing heavily. I'd be like trying to control my breathing. Be like, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. And that didn't. It worked. It did work out actually, because I did meet a good amount of people that way, and I was able to go out with four or five women. I never, you know, extended the relationship because of another fear that I have, and that's going to be the big reveal in my 500th video. Uh, and please don't try and guess at it in the comments, because that's just really dumb. Let me check my time. Alright, I'm at 18 minutes. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I got some success there. Uh, and then my dad dies. Um, and I moved in with my mom, and and I knew no one in the city where my mom lived. Um, mom did try to introduce me to a couple of uh, work buddies of hers who were my age, which was pretty cool. But for the most part, I didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? I didn't have uh, my high school friends who tried to hook me up. I didn't have... Uh, I, did, I wasn't able to ask a girl, yo, did you go to this high school? Because I saw you, I see you're wearing the uh, school shirt. It's cool. You know what I mean? I couldn't do that. So that's when I had to do even more research and I had to look up, I had to look up lines. I had to be like, okay, what can I say that one hasn't been said already and two gets their interest. And so I did research on that. I did a lot of research. And a lot of it is found in the link that I posted in the description, theattractionforms.com. That gives you a good starting point of where to go if you want to meet women, of, of what to say uh, when you start the conversation. Uh, yeah, good ice-breaking lines, I suppose. So I, look, I did research on there and looked up those, and that's when I really started to do the newbie mission. That's when I, that's when I, started, I went out to department stores. 
uh, there was a there was a strip mall that had about like 20 or so stores in them. I would go to each one and I'd talk to two people there, or there'd be like 10 department stores. I'd go to each one there and I'd talk to like I talked to like two girls a piece in each one, and marginalizing that really, really, really got me to understand a couple of concepts uh, about other people that I did not know before, um, and I'll reveal those later on, but it's, this took me a good five or so months to do, and let me tell you, there are some days where I was just where I would like collapse from nerves. I would go to my car and I would just be like, I would I would have to sit for like a good five ten minutes, just trying to get my heartbeat to stop. Even one time I got so far, there was this one girl who like really liked me, and like all I all I said to her was like, I said something about her. Uh, it was like a clerk. I said something about her uniform. I'm like, yo, you got stand in your uniform right there. You, do you, do you, it's, it's like one of the things I like to say. I like to make fun of people. I like to make fun of strangers, especially women, when I talk to them for the first time. So I was making fun of her, uh, the stain on your, on her uniform. And I said to her, yo, you got stain in your uniform. Do you like knowingly like wear it even though the stain's on there? Or is it something else? And she's like, haha, aren't you cute? And I'm like, eh. Tell me I'm cute within the first three seconds of us meeting. I like it already. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and like she was just like, oh my god, you're so cool, you're so cool. And I couldn't really get any further because I was like, you know, that's when I, it was like, I was like, holy shit, you're liking me. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> um, so yeah. And I, oh, my god, that day, that day was crazy, because I went, I remember, like, I almost got into an accident, like, 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 I got so nervous, I was, like, crying on my way home, on the drive home, uh, and I almost got into an accident, because my, 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 my vision was blurry from the tears, and it was crazy, I was, I was, like, crying, I was, it was happy, I was happy that I was able to finally, you know, talk to women without being stupid nervous so that's my message in this video is that if you have social anxiety or if you have social phobia or something like that one you're not alone and I just proved it with with me bearing my heart and soul and some of my life story in this and and two there are solutions uh, but you gotta be creative enough to find those solutions and you gotta be, you know, I mean, I had the life event of my dad passing away without me, you know, taking a girl to meet him as a girlfriend, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, I had that one, like, I had that one, like, moment of clarity, I guess, what they call it now, no. So, you know, but you gotta have, you gotta have something that really, like, like, a, a, Tony Robbins calls it a pain threshold, where like, you know, where you're in so much pain that you will do anything to stop the pain. And that's how I felt after my dad died, because I'm like, yo, now I'm alone. I have nobody. Holy shit. <laughs> it's time to, it's time to fix this. It's fine, time to fix this uh, social anxiety dilemma once and for all so I can free myself. And, you know, that's why, that's why I did. So, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think this is completely necessary. But it certainly helped my case. So, yeah. So that's uh, Life Story Vlog number two. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say in the third one. I'll, I'll find something. I'll find something. Out. I know what to talk about in the third one. Because there's a lot of uh, issues that I have. A lot of what they call emotional baggage that I have. Which, uh... I'm trying to sort out and trying to get rid of some of it and doing these vlogs is actually an avenue of me airing it out and letting it go. So, yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for not judging. If you are not judging in the comments or video responses or whatever. And if you are judging, then shame on you. 
Um, and like I said, if you know me, if you happen to know me, please don't say much about these kind of videos. Uh, or my LP videos, I know they probably suck. <clears throat> so whatever, it's just, yeah, just be mature about it. Alright, I'm out of here. Peace.